Hey friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gen Sense. Hope you guys are doing well. Today, we're gonna to be tackling the top five Yves Saint Laurent fragrances for men, according to Fragrantica. So I did top five Versace not that long ago. I figured, let's tackle YSL next. And with this one, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. So with Versace, I went through and I looked at all the scores and everything, and then I presented them to you. This time, I'm going to make my best guess as to what I think the top five are. I haven't looked yet. And we're gonna work through the top five and see how right or how wrong I am. But I think I have a pretty good idea. So let's jump into it. Let's check it out. Okay, so the only rule here is the same rule as we did with Versace, which is if the fragrance is discontinued, really hard to find, then we're not going to include that as one of the official top five. So it has to be fragrances that you can readily get. And by readily get, I mean, you can find them other places than going to eBay and paying like $300, because that sucks. So I guess first off, let me give you guys what I think is probably the top five, at least as best as I can guess. Okay, so I think number five, maybe La Nuit de Lome Le Parfum. I think this is one of the better La Nuit de Lome flankers, and I think that it was released far enough in the past that a lot of uh, people who love to just thumbs down new releases probably you know, didn't get to this one. So that's why I think number five. Number four, Why Eau de Parfum, just super popular, but with that comes a lot of people who will thumbs down a fragrance on Fragrantica. So I figure it's gotta be in the top five, but I don't think top three. Number three, I'm thinking the original Loam. It's a really solid fragrance, easy to wear, great for spring and summertime. Got that ginger citrus opening that smells so good. So I figure make it into the top three. Number two, I'm thinking Old Team. I love Old Team. A lot of people out there love this one. And it's also discontinued but it is still readily available at discounters and places, so you can still find it pretty easy for now. And so that's gonna leave me with number one, La Nuit de Lome, no explanation necessary. One of the biggest date night compliment pulling fragrances in the designer realm ever. Now, of course, I know that Blue Electrique is gonna be number one as far as the uh, overall ranking goes, so I'll just tell you that right now. But Blue Electrique in the US, can't really find. So even though I know that's gonna be number one, officially not in this because of the rules. Okay, so that's what I feel like the top five will probably be. Let's see what it actually is. So a whole lot of discontinued fragrances actually are at the top, like collector's editions of La Nuit de Lome, which those don't count. And actually I own those collector's editions. So that's kind of cool. So this is a lot messier than I was expecting. There are a lot of fragrances that are in between, you know, fragrances that are either collector's editions or discontinued, things like that. Stuff that's very difficult to find nowadays, things like Reeve Gauche, Koros flankers from decades gone by, opium eau de parfum, stuff that you're gonna have to pay up for. So there's a lot of those in there. I'm not gonna include those, but if you wanna go check it out on Fragrantica, be my guest, you can see all the stuff I'm talking about. Let's jump into the top five that you can actually find for a decent price. Number five, and I'm kicking myself, kicking myself for this, M7 Oud Absolu. Now, Oud Absolu is still difficult to find sometimes. Uh, it'll pop up at discounters and then it will be gone and then pop up and be gone. But as of this video, you can still find it in like the 70 to $80 range if you look online. So that's not too bad. And that is from places other than eBay, so that counts. So good old M7 Oud Absolu. This is essentially a re-release of M7, which is an absolutely fantastic fragrance that really set the tone for Oud designer fragrances to hit the mainstream. So this one has mandarin orange, it's got Oud, it has labdanum, it has patchouli and myrrh as well. A fantastic release going to appeal more to middle-aged guys and older I would say younger guys probably won't like it too much it's different in terms of uh, a designer oud as compared to the designer ouds coming out nowadays so that was number five whiffed on it number four another one where I'm just like ah opium eau de toilette now to be fair, this one is not in circulation like the ones that I had guesstimated, but I love this fragrance. So that's why I feel derpy 
having forgotten this one too. Here she is. Now look at that bottle. Definitely a product of its time with that huge atomizer on top that looks like it should be on a bottle of hairspray. Black currant, star anise, vanilla, and tolu balsam, some of the notes in the fragrance. Super sexy, very masculine, but at the same time, mysterious, uh, gentlemanly, a little bit dark. But then with this, this tart, semi-sweetness that works in with everything. Opium is, is fantastic. So I have no qualms with this being in the top five. In fact, I kind of feel dumb that uh, I didn't have it in the top five, even more so than M7. So Opium Pour Homme Eau de Toilette, number four. Number three, Loam Ultime. So I had this at number two, it's actually at number three, but really you, you can't argue that at all. Having it be as one of the, the top three best fragrances from a house that you can currently get. As I said, when I was talking about this before, awesome opening. It's got that ginger and citrus. It's very fresh, it's sweet, it's classy, but at the same time, easily worn casually. The rose note in here, really, really good as well. And the woody dry down is also good. Loam Old Team has been discontinued for a minute, but you can still find it, thankfully. It won't always be that way, of course. Eventually the stock will run dry. When it does, the price will skyrocket. That's what tends to happen with these YSL fragrances when they do finally run out of stock. The people that are holding on to it will start, you know, flipping it on eBay for double or triple what it was going for. But as of now, thankfully, as I said, you can still find it. And if you've been interested, I suggest scooping it up. I do think this is awesome. This is one of my favorite YSLs ever. Number two, Loam. So I had them flip-flopped. I thought it was Loam Ultime at two, Loam at three. It's actually the other way around. Loam really, as I've said a few times, helped make that blueprint for that kind of blue fragrance, versatile compliment pulling opening, that citrus and ginger combination, the way it's pulled off here. You can feel that influence in fragrances that came out years after. The performance is maybe not great, but I'm fine with that. That actually gives it really good versatility because you don't need to worry about choking people out. If you need to, you can get a big bottle like this, spray on as heavy as you want. It's a big time compliment puller. Why sell loam? Awesome release. So of course, number one, La Nuit de Lome, which I really already knew that it was La Nuit de Lome because all the fragrances above this one are discontinued. Blue Electrique is above this, and then after that, as I mentioned earlier, it's a lot of other uh, discontinued fragrances that are very difficult to find. It's La Nuit de Lome, everybody knows this. Cardamom in there sets this off. Everybody knows how it smells. It's a big time compliment puller, an amazing date night fragrance, and the popularity of that still carries over. That is still an awesome seller. It's uh, always done very well, both with your average Joe and also people that collect and connoisseurs and all that stuff. Everybody seems to really enjoy it. So Lana Weed alone, not a surprise. I, I got one right. I got one out of five. So we're batting 20%. We're batting 200 here. In my defense, the next two fragrances would have been Lana Weed alone, Le Parfum and Y Eau de Parfum. I think it's uh, actually the order swapped, it was like Y Eau de Parfum and then La Nuit de Lome Le Parfum, but still. Those would have been in the top five, if not for Opium and M7. And I had those correctly placed if M7 and Opium weren't in here. They would have been five and four, so. I did pretty good, kind of, sort of. So there we go. Those are the top five YSL uh, fragrances, according to Fragrantica, at least the ones that you can get your hands on. And in case you're wondering what the lowest three fragrances are that you can still get from YSL, just in case you're curious, the lowest rated YSL Loam Cologne Blue. There's a collector's edition below that one, but after that, Loam Le Parfum. And then after that, at number three, Koros. So those are your three lowest rated YSL fragrances. Oof. All right, guys, that will do it for me. Let me know in the comments if any of this is a surprise to you or if you, you already knew all the fragrances and you knew exactly where they were gonna be placed because you are big brain. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.